looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry. And it was such a, a, you know, every day is different. I wake up and go, oh, okay, here we go. What's going on today? And today, as I'm listening to the intro to the show, to the Light on Living show, the word comfort really jumped out at me today because um, I shared with everybody here and there that I am literally in the middle of a move, like I moved. And so, of course, the event room moved. And there's so much transformation, so much change that goes on with these things. And and quite honestly, that slogan that I came up with there about give me reasons to feel better, that has never come at a, a better time for, I'm going to say myself, that I'm really taking it in because a lot of times I think, oh, my gosh, I just don't know if I can go on. I just need to feel better. There's, You know, it's, it's, it's always a stressful time to move. And my guest today, I am so excited to ask him that very question, which is, you know, how can we feel, but how can we keep going on when it, when things seem so hard or challenging or difficult or just not going your way? Because everybody, every one of you listening right now, you're each going through a different growth experience, a different challenge, a different, I mean, these can be exciting things, but they come with these really difficult things. And sometimes it's a matter of you know, I've, I've always thought that that statement, you got to step out of your comfort zone. I mean, I really rebel against that one. I'm thinking, no, I want to be comfortable. <laughs> so, so as I, you know, I, I think I truly do have the, the perfect guest um, to share the very first ever show in the new event room. Um, and I'd like to, I'm going to bring him on and I'm going to, I'm going to share with you who he is. He is, he's a spectacular, I'm using that word. He's a spectacular human being for doing something in the way that he did it. So I want to share with you that his name is Tony Bussey. Now, does that sound familiar to everybody? Anybody hear that name? Because he's made news headlines, um, and he, I think he's touched a lot of people in their lives and really inspired them because he went to lose over 300 pounds. And I wrote in my title, he lost over 300 pounds to be the bigger man. And, I, and I'll tell you why that's so important and imperative. He, did, he did, didn't just lose this weight. to look better, you know, yes, to feel better, but there was so much more underlying this. And so um, Tony has written a book about it, actually, from thick to thin. Um, But more than that, first of all, I want, I am excited. I I always can't handle the introductions because I want to bring on my guests so fast, but I want to welcome you, Tony. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm honored to be on your show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's a big thank you for me because everybody listening here, I just want to share. I I read his story and I was like, oh my gosh, I just I just even want to interview him just to get um, an article to share with everybody. And then after Tony and I spoke, he is just the sweetest man, first of all. Um, oh, but, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you really are you have great insights. Um, but then I thought, no, no, you're absolutely. We need to get you on the show because yes. uh, your words. I mean. Tony, what was the exact number um, of pounds that you you were able to shed and, and let go of? Three hundred and thirty-four pounds. Three hundred. Like go I, up and I go up and down like two, three pounds all the time, uh, depending on you know night shifts, things like that. But three hundred and thirty-four pounds is, is what I lost. Like it's just it's just incredible. Like I so I need to almost sit there for a second because everybody can really bring it. Like that's. I don't even know. I wish I had something that's equivalent to everything, but you'll have to go see everybody. If you want to see the pictures, we've got some pictures. You've had some great before and after pictures, and you have some pictures of the clothes that you were wearing before. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Did you know all that way, if, if, if If people want to I, – I, the way I try to explain to people the kind of the amount of weight it is, is basically the same weight of approximately seven of those big water jugs. Oh, okay, so those big sort of heavy ones. Fun. Yeah, the ones that go on top of a water cooler. If if you were to put that on your back, oh my gosh, that's what, <laughs> that, that's what it would feel like. 
And, you know, and imagine, like, and just everybody can really imagine that, yeah, lugging that around on your back and all your joints and everything, and, and you, oh, and yeah. how, uh, we, like, this is so neat, because uh, we're going to walk through the experience, but not too much, because I really want to get to the part where I want to really inspire people and help them, to, it, so wherever they are in their life, you, in their, in their oh, yeah. body, in their life. Yeah. But yeah. for you going through that time, there was a, a pivotal moment, but we're going to talk about that, but just walk us up to, here you are, you're living life, just like anybody else, we're all given the same life. Yeah, and, yeah. And did, did you were you obese or, or gaining weight as a child, and then into your teens? Uh, when I was a child, I was I was kind of chubby, but not not really. I mean, I had my moments. I look back in some pictures, and I was a bit of a bigger kid. But when I graduated from high school, I was not overly big. You know, if you were to see me, you would just think I was just another normal. You know, I might have been 30 or 40 pounds uh, overweight. Uh, I, I found when I put on a lot of weight uh, when I first uh, moved to Alberta. And when I came up here, I was around 330, 340 pounds. But I was still very active. I could still do things. I mean, my first job when I came here, I was a water delivery guy. Ah, there's the water and, connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and... Um, so I would um, do that, but I was still able to do that. But over the years, I, I gradually got bigger. I mean, I remember I drove uh, back to Newfoundland for a trip, and, and when I came back, none of my clothes would fit. Mm. So I, I was just, and everybody was kind of commenting, you know, Tony, you put on a bit of weight. I didn't really pay any attention to it. But then over the years, I just gradually, you know, 20, 30 pounds a year, it seemed like. To where I topped out my heaviest weight, I was 567 pounds. 567. So I'm <laughs> glad you're here to get the numbers straight, yes, because there's the numbers all over the place. 500. And you know, I want to. And I'm not a tall guy. I'm only about, I'm between 5 foot 8 and 5 foot 9. Right. So to carry that, it's like even more so if somebody's sitting there at 6 foot, you know? Yeah. When, yeah. when somebody. When, like you said, you drove back home and people who do know you and they were yeah. able to recognize and see that before the close. When somebody mentions that to you, where do you, um, are you taking it from a place of like they care about me, they're concerned, um, or they're judging? Like, how, how did that feel when somebody were to say that to you? Oh, I would always take it as, as concern. People were very uh, concerned about my health, and, and so was I. I mean, I, I would wake up every morning. It's very, uh, very aware of the bad situation I was in. As soon as you would open your eyes in the morning, I mean, I knew yeah. the prison that I had made for myself because everything ached. And then you would look in the mirror and you would see this person. You're like, how oh, did I get this big? Yeah. And it was depressing. I mean, it was just overwhelming. As soon as you would get up in the morning, you realize, but people would talk to me and I could see it that in their eyes when they would talk to me that it was out of love and out of concern and you know I mean my my daughter would call me and, and be crying or her mother would be you know uh, afraid of my life you know I would mm -hmm. have a friend of mine that if he didn't hear from me for three or four days he would come and check on me because he thought I was I could be a heart attack yeah yeah and still you know. get this connection, and I, I raise that that point because um, a lot of us, we, we might have friends that we can see this, and we don't know, should I say something, should I not, um, how do I say it, and how will they take it? So I, I was kind of, oh, that that's good, because I sometimes we do need that almost permission to share that we love someone to, and show that concern. But here it yeah. is, it's interesting, you've had these people that were showing us concern. Were you concerned about your health? Oh, Oh, usually. I, 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 to this day, I, I mean, I, I look back on all that now. I really did not believe I would be alive right now if I didn't change things. Wow. I mean, wow. my, I was getting fluid coming out of my eyes. My skin was turning a different color. My, I was getting dark spots up around my forehead. Um, oh. I was getting um, tingling in my legs, things, things like that. And I was, you know, I was starting to get chest pains. I was, uh, it was becoming harder and harder to move, to walk. I was becoming more depressed, uh, uh, you know, things like that. There, there was times, I mean, I was never, I love life, but 
there were times if, if I went to bed and I didn't wake up in the morning, it wouldn't have bothered me yeah. because life was becoming that unbearable. And I find it so, um, like you mentioned the word prison, and I think that's, you're describing it. And yet yeah. when we're in that situation, we're putting ourselves in that situation. And Oh, yes. But, and well, how does how did you get there? Like, is it that you, see, you said you love life? Um, so, did you love yourself, or no? How does it happen? No, no I you you be, you be, you become in a you trapped in a cycle. I mean, I I lived alone. I was kind of I, I had a lot of loneliness. Mm. But and I guess I didn't. I mean, I I didn't do drugs. I didn't drink. I didn't do anything like that. So food became my addiction. Food became my best friend. Food became my uh, lover. You could say food became everything. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when I wanted to feel a bit of happiness, I turned to food. When I wanted to escape, I turned to food. But the thing about that is. The very thing that's giving you temporary happiness is the thing that's actually taking away your life. Yeah. You know, it's destroying you one little bit at a time. And you don't see it at the time because all you think about is that escape from your reality. Sitting down with that big box of chicken wings, sitting down with that bag of chips, that ice cream. For that few minutes that you're eating that you're escaping reality and you're feeling something that you're longing for you're longing for happiness and you're having it just for those few minutes but then once you're done you slip back into that horrible life that you escaped for a couple minutes and now you've just made it worse yeah and you know it's interesting you say that about um emotions and a feeling like you 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 go from loneliness so then you eat and you feel better but then you're worse but then there was this one emotion that you felt which was the strongest of them all and if you could share that experience of um of the evacuation and how that changed your life oh that i i look back on that now and i almost choke up Mm because when they evacuated us um, from the fire, uh, there was a person there and he took me from the back of the line to the front of this long lineup of people waiting to get on the bus. And I understood why he did it because, I mean, here, here's a man that's almost 600 pounds. It's 34, 35 degrees hot outside in May. Up here, it was, it was unusually hot. So you don't want a guy that size passing out. <laughs> Oh, eat in the middle of this evacuation. So what would you do? You know, I don't fit on an ambulance. I don't fit in a stretcher. I don't fit anywhere. So they put me on the bus. And uh, when I get on the bus, this bus is packed, except there's an empty seat next to me. But I'm filling over into that seat so much that they can't put anybody there. So I look out the window and I see this long line of people. And they're all waiting to be evacuated like I am. Somebody's wife, somebody's husband, daughter, son. They're just waiting to get out of there. But here I am. I, I kind of butted in front of everybody so they could get me on the bus. So my, my size uh, prevented one of these people from leaving. And that had such an effect on me. That, that had a huge effect on me. And then while we were waiting to get on a plane, we were sitting on a bus for two, three hours, and I had so much time to think about this. Like everything, everything came to a head of about my life. All and now I'm affecting other people. And then I get on the plane, and these planes are flying in. They're picking up people, and as soon as they fill up, they're taking off, and these planes are packed. But now on the plane, there's a seat next to me, and it's empty. They can't sit nobody next to them next to me right there because I'm filling over into that seat too much. So again, this happens to you. Yeah. So the whole plane ride to Edmonton, I'm thinking about this. And I'm like, Tony, you can't keep going on like this. Now you're affecting other people. So I landed in Edmonton that evening, and that was it. I, I started right then and there. I started changing my diet. I started walking. And and I haven't looked back since. And now I have a life that <laughs> is unbelievable. And you know, that story is so touching. And and at the beginning, I said you're just truly the sweetest man, and and this is why because oh, it was actually your open heart that yes. 
about others. You actually put, you were so selfless. It's, it's, it's so interesting to say that it was so, it was more important that you make yourself healthy for, so that you're more inconveniencing others. And I think that is such almost like a backwards, but the tremendous and wonderful <laughs> way, way of looking at it. And, and that's actually one of the reasons why um, I want to explore that, that with you because yes. you said those two statements, I love life and, I'm inconveniencing others. Okay, now I'll do something. So what – we've still got a minute before commercial, but as, as we yes. start this, um, if anybody else is out there, this is a, a big thing, a big moment for everybody. You may be sitting there, whatever trouble it is that you're in, and think you can't get out of it oh. if you don't have the value. But what about for somebody else? Oh, you're worth it. Because, I mean, if I, I can't stress it enough. We get one chance at this. Yeah. Life life goes by like a warm summer breeze. It's over before you know it. But it's so beautiful while we're in this life that you're worth every every bit of struggle, every bit of thing that you can do to enjoy it. You're worth it. I mean, if somebody were to say to you or me today, one of our loved ones, say, uh, Tony, uh, Lisa, I need you to walk uh five kilometers across a city to bring me something. You would do it in a heartbeat. Why can't we do it for ourselves? You know what? And that's actually the question I want to leave with, because I know we're going to sneak away to commercials, but when we come back, it's like, that is the question that Tony's going to help us with. Why can't we do it for ourselves? And how can we, when we return? The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Home Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money, that business is hard? I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on The Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Imagine tapping into a power where you can access the ability to transform your views of money, success, happiness, and fulfillment. A power that you could unlock hidden talents, uncover new meaning, and amplify the significance of your purpose. Well, the feminine heart is the source of that power, intelligence, insight, and understanding. Join this new wave of women's leadership that's emerging. Be the woman who knows her greatest power to create goes well beyond the day-to-day striving for results. Be the woman who knows her true power to contribute to the world in significant ways is one that expresses her heart, enlivens her creativity, and elevates her spirit. Rise, amazing woman, rise. An amazing woman legacy book compiled by Marsh Engel, sharing the eight essential powers of the feminine from eight influential mentors, entrepreneurs, and change makers that will help you tap into that power. Rise, amazing woman, rise. Your legacy begins by leading with a feminine heart. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. <coughs> When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund.
Well, welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry. We have Tony Bussey here with us, and he was truly, in, well, inspired to transform his life all because of a wildfire that was spread um, in Alberta at Fort McMurray and had a pivotal moment. But he's written a book about it. It's called Through Thick and Thin, and it really is about his wake-up call, his his entire what started and sparked, I like to say that spark, yeah, that was a wild part, <laughs> sparked his, his transformation. Now, um, yeah. I love focusing on, like, your, it, this is a crazy transformation. In two years, and everybody, this happened in 2016. So in two years, he did do this big transformation. We're going to talk about it. But then there's still more to come. I mean, you're still in the process of, of even more transformation and more transformation. But what I want to ask you is we left off with, why do – why do we do things? Some people don't do things for other people, but why is it usually we are inspired to do something and motivate a call to action for someone else before ourselves? You know, I, I've, I've kind of thought about that quite a bit because I, I look back on myself and all those years that I was a prison in my own body. I, I didn't feel any more worthy than just you know basically laying on a couch waiting to die, just eating myself into an early grave. Yeah, but I would go and do anything for anybody else that I that I could. But it it, it it's like you you let life defeat you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's you let life knock you down so often that you feel worthless and that you feel helpless and that you feel unworthy. I guess you could say. Yeah. I mean, it's it's almost like the mind is such a powerful powerful thing because. The same mind that can convince you that you're worthless, that you're um, unable to change and so on, is also the same mind that can convince you that you're able to climb Mount Everest. Yeah. It's which which one do you want to tap into? But once you convince yourself and once you, you're able to tap into the strength of your mind and say, I can do this, then there's nothing going to stop you. And then once you find yourself that, hey, I'm worthy of this, I'm worthy of the love, I'm worthy of, uh, of the self-care that I can give myself, then everybody around you is benefiting from that. Because mm-hmm. the more you love yourself, the more you can love other people. That's a statement we always this, hear. But how yeah. oh, that's, that is such a tricky one. The more we love ourselves, the more we can give love and show love. Yes. It, De- you, definitely. You know. more, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you become more proud of yourself. So you become more proud of the things around you. You love mm-hmm. yourself. So you love people more. You <sighs> change your whole outlook on life. You know, you like for myself, I, I've become, you know, I love experiences. I love meeting new people. You know, you're not in your shell anymore because when, when you're almost 600 pounds, you don't want to go out anywhere. You don't want to go right. and talk to anybody. You just want to stay inside, stay secluded, because every time you would go out, all you'd feel is stares from people. Yeah. Now you want to go out and, and talk to people and, and hear their stories and their experiences. And and, and that's the biggest, I mean, that's the biggest uh, advantage of all of this now is getting out of my shell and meeting new people. Yes. Now, and you know, the, that's the neat thing too. You've really given yourself a whole new life and, and anyone oh. out there listening can too. Yeah. Oh, big time, big time. I mean, I, mean, I was um, 41 when I started this. I was almost 600 pounds when I started this. If, if people say, well, I'm too old, you're not too old. If I'm too big, you're not too big. But it's not only weight. It could be alcohol addiction. It could be drugs. It could yeah. be anything that you're dealing with. Yeah. But you can change it. I mean, it you took are me so two years to lose the weight, and that's two years in, in the grand scheme of things is nothing. Right. And did you ever want to give up? Did you ever think, I can't do that? No, no. Oh. Because the, the way I looked at it, Lisa, is that I was almost like I had to pick my pain. Okay. Am I going to go through temporary pain to lose the weight, like physical pain to lose the weight, to have a beautiful, happy life after? Or am I going to stay in a permanent pain for the rest of my life, physically and emotionally, and not enjoy life at all? Either way, I'm in pain. 
So I picked the quickest option. Now, you didn't have any guarantees from anybody else. This was you. You had to guarantee yourself that you were going to have a great life, that you were going to be pain-free, that you – did you do visualization techniques or kind of – what what tools did you use to get you there mentally? Emotionally. I, uh, for, I think what I used is when I first lost the weight, when I first had 30 pounds gone, I had that gone within a month. The, the mental aspect was that finally, finally, my weight is going down and not up. Ah. And as I kept losing the weight and the steps became easier, walking became easier, the advantages of having weight gone, like buying new clothes, fitting into my car, uh, you know, you go to restaurants, you can fit in a booth easier, That those types mm-hmm. of things. As that, as I became able to enjoy just the everyday aspects of life that normal size people could enjoy, mm. that kept me motivated. The state also, of gratitude, pain, or appreciation. Yeah. Sorry. And then the pain of all of those years of being that size—that's so ingrained in my head. I would never forget it. I used to wake up every morning and dream of this life, oh. and now that it's here, you know, it's. It's almost like you're a free man again, you know, right. like a like a man that could be in prison, and somebody finally lets you out. Why yeah. would I ever go back to that again? You know, okay. or a, or a man or a woman in a wheelchair, and you can learn to walk again. Why would I ever go back to that wheelchair again? Right. Now, when you say that about you, bring up some huge like things that we wouldn't have thought about. You just said, when I could fit into my car again or a booth, oh, yeah. like we've all, I, and I know a lot of, um, I'm going to say, well, I'll go with women, but women who say, you know, they don't want to sit on certain chairs, you know, at like a baby shower or something because, you know, yes. we usually have those fold out little party chairs and they're going, that's not going to work for me. And that's embarrassing yeah. to them. But so to be able to sit on that and not feel embarrassment is huge. Now, because you were so aware and you were in a state of appreciation of those things, um, oh, did yeah. you ever come up to a time where you want, you started to go, okay, I'm on a roll. I've got this. Oh, I can't wait to do that. But then it didn't happen and you judged yourself. Um, like what happens when those times where we go, like we want to fit into the next size down, but then we don't. Did you ever get let down or have to deal with that? Not, not really. No, okay. uh, I just, I just kept going. Life became so much easier. I, I can't stress that enough. That I just it just kept me going. Okay. You know, it, it was finally starting to appreciate what I've, you know, always dreamed of. You know, like the, the, even now when I get up in the morning, this feels like a dream. Mm-hmm. Every day when I put on a pair of socks, that feels like a dream. I couldn't even do that before. Right. You know, but- I I would I would go into my car barely fit you know i talk about a restaurant well if i did go to a restaurant which was very rare but if i did go the first question i would ask is do you have tables or boots oh. if we only had boots i couldn't stay in that restaurant because i couldn't fit you couldn't get in yeah no it, it just kept me the old fire the evacuation everything that got so ingrained in me it just kept me going and then when the weight started to come off and i could finally, 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 after all of these years, start to lose weight and not gain and start to feel, because I started to feel freedom again. Yeah. When you have freedom taken away from you for 10, 15 years, and you finally have access to it again, it's, it's a feeling that I can't even put into words. And and this is the neat thing. I love that you said this is a dream, a life that you dreamed of. And this is why I, and do you agree or not agree? um, This is why I believe that maybe not just vision boards, but just you've got to put those details in the dream, like the feeling so that it's ingrained. So when you say I dreamed of this life, when you wake up now and you're like, oh my gosh, this is the the life I dream of. Can can you see the exact same connection of feeling? Is Is it the same one? Oh yeah, oh, 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 big time. I the, the the thing is when when you finally, and like I said before, it's it's freedom to me. Yeah, I finally reached 
freedom, freedom in my mind, freedom in my body, physically, mentally. I finally have achieved freedom. There's nothing that can happen to me in life right now that can take that away from me. No. Not a wow. thing. I've, I've defeated the biggest handicap of my life. I've defeated the biggest prison of my life. Mm. That if, you know, God forbid, but if, if I was given six months to live tomorrow, I would end those six months with a smile on my face every day because I finally have achieved what I've always wanted in life, and that was freedom. You got there. That that freedom. So let's actually unwrap freedom. Freedom is now you. What what is freedom? You getting to do what you want to do. What what's yeah. freedom? Freedom to me is getting up in the morning and not being trapped in that horrible body. Mm. Freedom is is the ability to go out and enjoy everyday life, whether it's calling a cab, whether it's going out with friends whether it's wearing nice clothes, just the normal everyday activities of life and just being a normal person, that's freedom to me. Mm. If I want to go and buy a plane ticket and travel somewhere, I can do it. I don't have to get two seats. I don't have to worry about if I'm going to fit into a, a car rental at the airport. If, things like that. If I want to go out and meet people, I don't have to be filled with anxiety like, okay, are are they going to look at me, stare at me? Are they going to this and that? Mm-hmm. All of those so, things I'm not bound by anymore. A lot of fears have been removed. And I think that a lot of people who live life right now um, and they don't have freedom, they are in prison because the fears of, like you said, fear of this happening, fear of the booth, not yeah. a table, fear of, you know, this. Yeah. If someone's living in fear right now for their own reason, like, as you said, maybe they, they fear they can't, Stop drinking. They have a fear that they can't yes. step up their game in a career and and yeah. earn, mm-hmm. or they don't feel they deserve something. When I want to talk to you about, about habit, um, because when I talk, when I think about fears, we can get into the habit of fearing something. Yes. Oh, yes. And I just find it fascinating because with, with food, I mean, we all eat. So, so and oh, yes. we eat, eat, so many different reasons. I mean, and so do you, you enjoy eating right now, right? Oh, I love I love food, and, okay. and the thing is, oh, I I love food, but I like the biggest myth out there is that you have to starve yourself to lose weight. If you don't, I eat delicious food. Okay, I think just, everybody I've needs almost, to hear this. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm all, I'm almost been three years now that I haven't touched junk food. Right. That stuff is garbage. I stay away from that. I stay away from pop. I stay away from processed sugar. I stay away from all of that. I, I don't. I don't go back there. I I treat that stuff like an alcoholic would treat booze. Right. I love that you say that. It's, it's a garbage. I love that. I just love that you say oh, that. It's, oh, it's, just, oh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all garbage. It, in my in my opinion, is not even food. Like a, a bag of chips yeah. is not even food. That's that's yeah. That should be all just thrown right in the dump. Yeah. Yeah, I don't so know. So right now, if somebody right now, they really they have junk food in their lives, is any bit of it okay for you or you just don't, like you said, you just made it quite the statement, like, yeah, garbage, dump it. So you don't eat that stuff anymore. That's a, that's a, not even I a little get bit. Ang- I get angry at it. Because ah. I, I walk into a convenience store, say I go in and get a, a newspaper or a coffee or something like that. I see all of that stuff, and right away I'm flooded with memories of when I was almost 600 pounds. Oh. They really make it into the convenience store to get my fix. Right. Other people would have to go to a drug dealer. I would just have to go to a near convenience store and get my That's fix. What's it's called convenience. I, yeah, well, yeah, and I see it all there, and all those memories are flooded back, the memories of loneliness, the memories of being trapped, the memories of, oh, my God, am I ever going to get out of this? Right. The memories of not knowing if I was going to wake up the next morning. The memories of waking up throughout the night choking because so much weight was on my body that was choking off my breath. Oh. Things like that. So I see all of that and I'm flooded with those memories, but then I'm also flooded with relief that that's not my life anymore. Right. And that's now, key that you said that. Be, 
Yeah. I, I just want to highlight that everybody that that's huge that you said that it's not that you walk in and you get angry. You you are remembering that and honoring yeah. that state, but then yeah. you also balance it with the relief and I'm not there. Like you can settle like, yourself again. Like my daughter, she asked me, she said, Dad, if I get married in the future, would you have a piece of wedding cake? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I t- <laughs> I told her no. I said, wow. I'm sorry, but no. And her mother had to go over and explain to her, like, your father can't touch that stuff anymore. You don't want it to even go into your system? No, no, I've had my share of it. I don't even, you know, like a, a meth addict wouldn't go downtown and East Hastings, Vancouver, and for oh old time's sake, takes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh that's, the way I, that's the way I look at it. Yes. You know what? Those are very healthy boundaries. And I'm going to highlight that. That's a healthy boundary because you're not saying, like, you just know that it would be, why, why was it called play with fire? And I have to say that story. That was a funny one. Like, you don't want to even play with fire. But, yeah. And, you know, I, I want to talk, actually, I want to talk about the book when we get back. We've got commercials in, in about a minute. But um, these are things that I, everybody listening right now, I, if you're the one right there and it's specifically weight that you're dealing with and you're like, I don't know how I could ever not imagine not having a piece of cake at my, you know, child's wedding or um, never having a potato chip again or something like that. Um, I, I want to go into what you do eat when we come back. But then also yeah. I want to talk about your book because – I know, and I can attest this, that a book can change someone's life. And your book, Tony, might be just the one book that can change someone's life. Oh, I hope so. That's my that's my goal. That's and it's my your goal. goal. I know. We're going to talk about your goals. Are you really powerful in attaining your goals? So when we come back, we've got, we've got a jam-packed section when we come back. So everybody, stay tuned. Thank you. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. Perfect way to get to know your partner, yourself, and love more deeply. Download and join today. Mind connected to the heart, connected to the love, connected to the soul. I'm connected to you, connected to me. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human. And she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. Oh, 
Oh, well, I'm so glad that everybody could join us today. You know, this is one of the, the I think, the, one that's most broad around the world. Like, I think, I can't imagine anybody really out there who, who hasn't thought about their weight, thought about their health. And let's, actually, let's put it on to the health. Could they be healthier? Could they be stronger, fitter? And maybe it's not just about weight itself. But there's also things I know when I look at my life, I think, okay, I really, in this one area, I would love to be healthier or better, but I know I have to give something up. And maybe that's not the right mindset that I want to be looking at. So I've got Tony Bussey here with me because he's helping us to find out, well, he's actually leading the example. He's quite the leader (laughs) in how to achieve some great results in transforming your life. And Tony, is that the way, like, you didn't look, see, I love that you didn't look at it like I'm giving this up. Or did you, wait a second, let me ask you. Did you look at it like I have to give this up to get this or was where was your mind? How did you do this? <laughs> I was I was looking at things like not not really what I was giving up, but what I was tired of having. And I was, tired of I was, having. Yeah, I was tired of having that horrible feeling. I was tired of having physical pain. Mm-hmm. I was tired of having mental pain. I was tired of living this life of just passing me by day to day, basically just, you know, slowly Mm -hmm. dying on a couch. Yeah. You know, life is so beautiful. It's meant to be out and enjoyed. It's meant to be seen. It's meant to be experienced. That's what life is about. Not, not to eat yourself into an early grave. So I, that's, that's the way I looked at things. And I kept thinking about the beautiful life that I'm going to gain not about the junk food that I was giving up. Right, yeah. We, we, have to, we have to look at food with a different mindset because, I mean, food can be enjoyable, sure. I sit down now and I eat delicious, healthy meals. But we have to look at food as a fuel for our body to go and enjoy everything else that's beautiful in this world. Yes, yes, I mean, absolutely. Like, like you, you look at a vehicle, for example. If you were told that you're only going to have one vehicle the rest of your life, you would baby that vehicle, you would give it regular oil changes, and you would give it perfect, awesome attention. You would take care of it. You would clean that car every day. Why not do that to our bodies? This is the only body we get in this life. Why not feed it the proper fuel, give it the proper healthy food that it needs? Mm -hmm. And then it will give us the life that we long for you know, so that is that's actually i love that analogy now here's the question i have to ask you because i, I think thank goodness you actually have the spirit in you to say i do love life even even at oh, yeah. 500 pounds 400 pounds but so if somebody's given this you know car here you go here's the keys here's the one car you got to drive it forever but you don't want to see the world you're not connected to what the enjoyment is um can you share like what part of what part of you expands and grows when you tar- when you finally connect with yourself and know your worth? I would say your mind, Ooh. because because you you learn to appreciate things a lot more. You learn to see things with different eyes. Oh, yeah. When you're not trapped in physical pain, when you're not trapped in mental pain, when you're finally free of that. Yes. You you look at things so much differently. It's almost like you're given a second chance. Because I honestly did not believe I would be alive to this this day. Yeah. And here I am, given a second chance. You know, here I am, given this freedom again. I, I keep saying freedom because that's what it is to me. It's freedom, physical yeah. freedom, mental freedom. And that, that's what I would say. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I right now I think you just gave. I have an aha moment. You, you, uh, when you said about you, everybody's had some kind of a pain, whether it's a headache or um, a stomach ache or oh, body pain. And you're right, oh, your yeah. mind gets in prison because you can't get past that. Like you're not free because no. you're so focused on that pain. Um, and mm-hmm. when you said that, I just love that you said that right now because yeah. you're right. You see the world with different eyes. Like imagine somebody has oh, a, yeah. a, a headache right now, and it goes away you suddenly go 
oh, I can I can step into the light. I can look at the view. I can. Yeah. You, and what a beautiful thing you just said. Now, it, do you talk with well, your book? If somebody were to go and pick up your book right now and they were read it, what what is what's the purpose of your book? And why did you share your story? I wanted to excuse me. I wanted to give people hope. And I want I got very real in the book. I want to show people what I went through day to day. So if there's anybody else out there reading the book and they're like, Well, <clears throat> excuse me, Tony didn't go through this and then you read a bit further, Well, oh, Tony did. <laughs> oh, Tony didn't experience this and you read a bit oh Tony did. So Tony went through all the exact same things that I'm going through day to day and yet he still lost the weight and he kept it off. No tricks, no gimmicks, just hard work, stubbornness, and walking. That was it. And if they can see that and read that and say, wow, there's hope for me. But also for not to feel alone. Because the worst thing when you're going through, whether it's alcoholism, drug addiction, a bad marriage, financial problems, or weight, the, the biggest thing is people feel alone. They feel like they're the only person in the world going through that. Mm-hmm. And that makes it harder to get out of that so if somebody can read my book and say wow i'm not alone in this here's a man that has shared the same experiences i shared from going to a restaurant to feeling like he's being stared at and all these things so i'm not the only person in the world going through this and if he can defeat it so can i just want to give people hope because there's nothing worse than a feeling that you're alone in whatever yeah. particular situation you're dealing with. It's, it's a horrible feeling. And there's that, that sweetness from you coming out again, that connection no. and, that, and that compassion that you are trying to share with the world because you are yes. so right. That that feeling of a low, you know, it's really, this is a weird one. I, the funny thing to say is during my move, right, I was going yes. through quite a bit of weird anxiety, things like, oh, I don't want somebody to, see this or I don't want to help move because of this and and oh, yeah. it, it might it was my, he, my dad would I would call my dad and go I just you know I'm, I'm uncomfortable he goes honey goes everybody goes through that when they move and I thought no no it's only me <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and but when you and, realize people do it makes you feel better it does. It really does. And I thought, no, not everybody. I, I can. I have to be the only one who's tired, you know. <laughs> and you almost have to laugh at yourself in a, in a nice way, in a very like, oh wow, look yeah. at that. Yeah. And and you're right. And a book, when you read other people's stories and words, it's like you're right there. And I can only imagine. I'm so looking forward to reading your book. I haven't got you yet, but I've had the pleasure of speaking with you. Thank goodness. But oh yes. The, now you are you also do you travel and do any speaking engagements? I'm, I I have a couple of things uh, that I'm looking into right now, but I am definitely, I love traveling and I would oh. love to get into uh, uh, speaking uh, yeah. and just talking to people and, and try and inspire people. That's actually a, a dream of mine. I, I love speaking in front of people and, and so on. And uh, yeah, I would love, I would love to get into that. Uh, and just tell them my story. And cause, and cause I mean, if, if through all of this, if one person can write me and say, Tony, I lost all my weight because of what you did, mm-hmm. it'd be a success. Yeah. I'll be yeah. happy. You know? Happy is Because right now there's somebody else out there that's almost 600 pounds that's yeah. going through the exact same things that I did two years ago and they're feeling hopeless. Yeah. You it- know, you said something to me during our call, and I have to share this with everybody because, um, you know, Tony's mentioning that, you know, he's done this in two years. But it, you know what? It might be somebody. It takes them seven. It might take somebody one. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you were so kind. I love that you shared. I worked in, you know, my as my background is a holistic nutritionist, and I started off in yeah. weight loss. This is back in, in 1996. And okay. back then, it was, it was all women. And you were so open-hearted, and you shared with me that you said, you know, I know it's easier for men. It can be. Yeah. Uh, it usually is. And you said, and your heart goes out to women or other people who, with, for maybe it's a man, but has other conditions that it slows them down. Um, yes. What can you how what can you offer to them just for a little bit of motivation inspiration for somebody who it's going to take a little longer. Well, as as long as you're moving forward, whether no, you know whether it's it's it takes you a day, whether it takes you five years, it's it, you know if it takes you a month to lose two pounds, 
at least you're losing two pounds and you're not gaining. Yeah. You know, it's better to move slowly than not move at all. <laughs> yes, yes. Right? <laughs> that keep on keeping on. If you don't on. move at all, you're definitely not going to get to your destination. Moving slowly, I mean, it's it's uh, just just keep at it because the rewards at the end of it far 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 away the struggles that you're going through now. Yeah. Did you track? Yeah. Did you track? Like, did you do journal or track your weight or measurements? And do you agree with all that? I, if whatever works for people, I didn't track anything. The only thing I, the only thing I use was my belt. Yeah, great. Right. <laughs> I would I would come home and I I never even owned a scale up to a couple months ago because a uh, scales didn't fit me. I would use this uh, a warehouse scale, right. but I would just have my belt and I would punch holes in my belt and that's when I knew I was losing weight. And that's it. I never counted a calorie, never tracked anything. I wouldn't have a clue how to do it even to this day. Oh, that's amazing. And, you know, <laughs> I love that because you were looking – I lo- that's exactly why. Because you were looking more for the rewards in life and experience yes. versus the yes. rewards of a calculator of sort, you know. Oh, yeah, because the scale is only one aspect of it because, like, for example, I work night shifts. If you work a bunch of night shifts, never weigh yourself after a night shift because your metabolism gets screwed up. So you could get discouraged that way. You know, you might just uh, never weigh yourself in the evening because you've got food in your belly from eating all day. That that doesn't mean you put on weight. That just means your food is in your belly. Food weighs things. That's all it is. But people get discouraged as soon as you see that scale going up a pound, two pounds, three pounds. Don't. Mm -hmm. Just keep healthy living. But my yeah. big thing is I don't go back to junk food or anything because why would I go back to the very thing that got me in bad shape to begin with? Yeah. Stay away from it. Once you've kicked that habit, just stay away from it. Are you healthy now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> oh, mentally everything. I can I can take on the world now. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I. <laughs> It's uh, it's great. You're now. breathing. Every, you every, sleep well. You you breathe well. You sleep well. You move well. Oh, everything, everything. I have no aches or pains. I have no side effects. I have nothing. And no medication. I walk. No medication. Nothing. I get up in the morning. I'll get up around four thirty in the morning and I'll walk between three and a half to five kilometers. Oh wow! Okay, so it's just every day. It's, Every day. And, and I, I do the exact same thing now that I did when I first started. I eat the same way, and I do the same exercise. I still haven't joined the gym. I, I got to get a bunch of uh, skin taken off, so once I do that, then I plan on joining the gym and just get my like, toned up and so on. But yeah. yeah, I just do the same thing now, and I'll do it till the day I die. That's one thing I loved about your story too, because you everybody can do that. There's there's nothing there's oh, no limits to hold back. You're no. just eating regular food. You eat meat, you eat potato no, wait. Yeah. Do you no, I don't eat potatoes. I'll yeah. eat sweet potato. I don't okay. eat uh I don't eat pasta, I don't eat rice, but I eat a lot of fruits, I eat a lot of veggies, I eat meat, I eat eggs, I'll even add bacon once every couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, I eat nuts. I eat bananas, apples. Uh, I have a salad. Like I'll, uh, I'll get up in the morning, for example, and I'll usually have like a three egg, uh, cheese and mushroom omelet. Yum. And, and, <laughs> yeah, it's delicious. Then a piece of fruit. You know, I might go. Then if I'm on a day off, I'll go through the day. I'm gonna have a bowl of chili for lunch. And oh. supper time, it could be a steak with a, a salad. Yeah, so you're it. not missing out. Late at night. No, 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 not at all. I see food. I mean, salmon, love salmon, things like that. But I don't eat late at night. Mm-hmm. And I don't, uh, like I said, I don't touch any junk food. You know what? I want to share with everybody right now. And this is Tony Bussey, B-U-S-S-E-Y. He has a book yes. out. I want everybody to get it. It's from thick to thin. <laughs> And yes. and also, I would love for them to reach out and connect with you because you know what? This is how easy. And I, I'm saying this easy. This is the easy yes. steps. You're gonna eat well. You're not gonna eat garbage, and you're not gonna eat late at night. And you're gonna keep the body moving. And then you're gonna reach out to Tony. <laughs> and, yes. yeah. and you, 
I, yeah. I got an Instagram account, Tony Bussy 123 They can see a bunch of before and after pictures and yeah. things like that on there. Uh, the book is called Through Thick and Thin, How the Wildfire Was a Wake-Up Call to Transform My Life. They can find that on Amazon. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, what a, it's a beautiful ride. Oh. I, I wake up in the morning, uh, Lisa, and I almost choke up. I, I can't believe mm-hmm. that this is finally happening. I mean, well, if you would have told, told me three years ago that I would have been talking to you today mm-hmm. about weight loss and about a book out about weight loss, I never would have believed you. But here it is, it's three years. I mean, I've had to wait off now for a year. I've been maintaining for the past year. But three years ago, I was almost 600 pounds. Here I am now. That's gone. That's defeated. And I'm living a beautiful life. And on that three note, years. we're going to cut, they're going to cut us off. But oh. I want to say, everybody, just hear that. Three years ago, almost 600 pounds. Today, yes. happily, healthy, moving forward, everyday yes. stuff. So Tony Bussey, and reach out to him, please, everyone. Um, if you are trying to achieve any dream in life, I think he would be helpful. Thank you so much, Tony. It's just been such thank a you. pleasure. Oh, oh, I love you. every minute of it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Me so too. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week on Light on Living.